What are you doing? Ready, set, action! This is where we stayed in Astoria, under the picturesque Astoria Mangler Bridge. Some people say you can get shanghai here, or disappear entirely, but don't believe it for a second. They put on a musical every summer about it, but I'm sure that never happens these days. So let's explore Astoria. Once again, here's the Astoria Mangalay Bridge from a couple different angles. David and I went out to see the wreck of the Peter Iredale, pictured here behind us. Although no lives were lost, the Peter Iredale ran aground in a storm in 1911, and its skeleton still remains a hundred years later. The day we visited, the winds were so fierce that the high-priced video microphone I was using couldn't pick up anything but wind noise. So as a result, I'll narrate some of the story behind this mini vacation. So those of you who don't know anything about Astoria can learn more. Keep in mind, it's been a few days since we got back, so I have absolutely no idea what we were saying during this video. I'll see what I can remember now that I'm back home in my jammies. The Columbia Bar was not only the name of a place where locals hung out and ordered pictures of margaritas, but a hellish ocean graveyard for sailors trying to cross the waters between the mouth of the Columbia and the Pacific Ocean. Astoria was founded in 1811 by the Bumblebee Tuna Company, and Astoria was almost named the City of Bumblebee. But then, John Astor, America's first millionaire, bought the naming rights, and he ever, never even came to town for a visit. Back in those days, Astoria was a thriving metropolis filled with Finnish, fishermen, and beavers. In fact, it was beavers galore that brought everyone else out west in the first place. There were beavers as far as you could see, and that's why eventually Oregon came to be known as the Beaver State, and OSU was saddled with the unfortunate beaver mascot. There were a lot of minorities, including Chinese members of the Masonic Temple and the Finnish socialists. The Finnish were generally on the boats and the Chinese worked at the canneries. If you head out to Fort Clatsop State Park, one of the things you'll see are ancient relics of the past, including this Taco Time soda cup nestled at the bottom of one of the old gunnery holders. Although it sounds like the name of a modern day crime, this historical area was known as Battery Russell, and it was a working defense post for the army from 1904 to 1944. Be a good name for a cat. Skipping on? Skipping on. I thought you said there was the Skipping on River. Yeah, we crossed it. You did? Yeah, we crossed the Skipping on River. Oh. Now we're skipping on down to the Fort Clatsop uh, Memorial. Well, that other place we were, that's not where Lewis and Clark stayed. Uh, well, same general area. But we were out there telling people that Lewis and Clark stayed out there by the by the Peter Iredale. And they didn't no, stay no, there. no, no. That's where the Peter Iredale is where the shipwreck was. So we gave misinformation and we have to correct that. You did, I didn't. We're standing outside the um, Fort Clotsop National Memorial. It commemorates and preserves the story and significance of the 1803-1806 Lewis and Clark Corps of Discovery Expedition. And we're going up here later. That's the um, Astoria tall, Column. Tall thing. on a, a rare sunny day uh, with the story about the whale that um, was found at um, around Cannon Beach and um, Clark went out with some people to investigate this dead whale so looking here you can see that the Oregon Territory 
was owned by the Russians, the British, Spanish, and the French. So Oregon was once a communist country. Well, look at this fancy exhibit. It's like maybe it's one of those pop-up things because they have this big fancy sign here explaining the where the men stayed. There was a gate that went out to where the water was. There was a storage room, an orderly room where they sent all of their, you know, maids and butlers. And then up here, it was the captain's quarters. And then there was a special quarter for the family that made wine, the Charbonneaus. And then over here was the main gate. The enlisted men had a couple, oh, they had this whole side to themselves. So they were special too. Um, this says something about Sacagawea. Oh, Sacagawea and her baby. Uh, shared a room with somebody. Okay, and then let's see what's in here. Oh, that's trash. Well, that's not a... I don't think they kept their trash in that. But, okay, here's the port. Here it is. This is where they lived. Here. And then there's a flag. And there's, um, I don't know what this is. A place where they stood, or was that the bathroom? This side has doorways in between. So the servants were connected to the uh, people on this side. And then um, out here is where they played cards and watched video games. Um, and they were able to beam stuff from the spaceship and the satellite to um, communicate with the Indians and the, and the whales. And this is um, Sacagawea. She was, um, she was the sister of Pocahontas. And um, they were these really famous Indian ladies. They both later uh, were stars of Disney films. And um, I don't think there's really anything else you have to know. But there's some books and stuff about her, I guess, if you wanted to read them. They had come to explore, not trade. And they were a military expedition from a place they call the United States. Military, and I didn't wear my, my regimental coat. We have some in there. Okay. So they're army. Okay. But but that stuff starts wearing out and, and you know getting in disrepair. And so by the time they get out here, they're mostly in leather. Okay. And they were in moccasins from the get-go. Uh, we had a request to find a Finnish sauna in, in Astoria because so many people from Finland moved here. And um, along with the, the Chinese, and we found it. We found the Finnish sauna, so we wanted to be sure that we were able to share that with everyone. So hang and on a the, second. That used and to say Finnish sauna, but the sign has been torn down. Yeah, right next to that major bridge in town here. Hang on a second. While walking around in downtown Astoria, we came across this giant Douglas fir that is uh, from David Douglas Park. Across the street is the Baptist Church where they're still playing Christmas carols on the 27th of December. They really like the holidays here in Astoria. And there's City Hall. That's the post office, Aaron. Let us receive our king. Oh, here's the Clatsop County Courthouse right here, just two Built steps in down. 1904. From 1904. Well, you know what a big fan I am of Oregon Film. And here in Astoria, they have the Oregon Film Museum in the same building as the county jail.
You're supposed to be running down the road. Ah, there you go. That's better. Okay. When in Astoria do like the Italians, the town has seven hills just like Rome and its own 13-story column at the top of Cox Hill. This gigantic pole from 1926 is carved with the pictorial version of the town's history, including a giant bumblebee. Okay, David's taking his final 25 steps to the top of the Astoria Column. Top of the column. Named after America's first millionaire, John Jacob Astor. Where it is so windy outside, we could be blown to our deaths. There's a fierce Pacific storm coming in. Very windy, we reach the top. Lord Astor of Heber. Lewis and Clark left Astoria after just a few months. The Bumblebee Tuna Company moved its headquarters elsewhere in 1974, and they closed up shop entirely in 1980. The last lumber mill closed in 1989. But the port of Astoria still ships stuff around the world to learn more about the real history of Astoria. And plan your own trip, visit Wikipedia and the city of Astoria. Dr.